So what I'm going to show you here is how to create a customized document template for a library. So if we go into a SharePoint document library and we go to upload um, or add a new document, we can select the new option here and you'll see that I get Word, Excel and the standard Office documents along with the new folder option. If I select Word, what I'll basically get is that it will open up in Word Online and you'll see here that the document is in fact blank. So again, not really adding any sort of uh, template to it. And again, it's just created it down there. So we'll just get rid of that. Now, the other way that we can do it is if we go up to the files option up the top here, you'll see that we can select new document. Under new document, we've got this option here to create a new document in this library. We select that. And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna prompt us to open up um, our Word or Office uh, document to create that. So in this case, I'll select yes. It's going to download uh, that template, uh, populate it. Then we're going to open Word and we're going to be able to start editing that uh, new document based on the template. And then the idea is, is to save it back into the SharePoint document library. But as you see, unfortunately, uh, the document is blank. So it doesn't really provide much benefit at all, especially if you're looking to customize your options. So how do we go uh, about doing that? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to go out and create uh, the templates that we need in our Office document. So what I've done, for example, is created uh, an Excel template, an Office temp uh, Word template, and also a PowerPoint template that I'm going to use. So I'm going to basically inject those into uh, this library. Now, what I can do basically is if I go to library and then go to library settings, uh, what I have an option here is if I go into advanced settings, you'll see here that I under the document template, the one that I opened on my desktop using uh, Word uh, 2016 in this case was basically this document. Now, of course, I can select to edit this document and again, it'll give me this prompt. I can then go in, edit the document and then that will overwrite template.com docx there right so that is the document it's actually using now what we could do you would think is for example go in here and if we uh, copy this from another location in SharePoint and then we change this uh, document template let's say so let's make that one that we sh we've picked in SharePoint somewhere else and let's then go okay you'll see what we get is we get a nasty error basically saying uh, we can't do that and we can only uh, basically create the template from something in the forms directory okay so again not something that it likes doing so again if we go back to our version library here the one we're working on and we go into uh, library into our library settings you'll see under advanced settings that the only option I've got basically here is to edit the template so I could edit it save it up there but as you see the only option basically is I have one style of Office document. Typically here it's going to be uh, basically just uh, a Word document, which is not really what we want. So what we really need to do is we'll need to use something called content type. So to do that, we select the cog in the top right. We then go to site settings. Now what we're looking for under web designer gallery is this site content types. So we select that and you'll see these are all the default site contents uh, types that we already have. But we're going to create a couple of new ones here. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new one called My Word Template. And you'll see under here that I can choose, for, I have to choose a parent. So I'm going to choose um, basically a document content type because it's going to be a document. And in this case, just leave it as document. You'll see that I can put it into an existing content, a, a existing group. But what I'm going to do is best practice here is to create a new group so um, that basically it'll be easier to find. So we go OK and select that and that will now create a new content type called My Word Template and here it is here. Now what we need to do to actually get our file into there is we go Advanced and you see that we can now, if we wanted to, we could now inject that uh, document from our other SharePoint location if we wanted to, and that's probably a good way to do it, because then if you update the document in your SharePoint document library, it'll then flow through to the content part 
uh, content type and then flow through to anywhere else that it's been used. But in this case, I'm going to upload one. So what I'm going to do is go in here and upload my Word one. You'll see that I'm not going to make it read only and I'm going to leave the ability to update all content types that are inheriting from this. So I'll go OK and that will now complete that process and we now have a content type called My Word Template with a document, a, a, a edited, specific, targeted um, template file for that content type. So next what we'll do is we'll go in and repeat that process. So what we'll do is we'll go in and create and create a new one here called My Excel template uh, basically repeat the process here so what I'm going to do is again pull it from the document content type so I'm going to make it a document but in this case because I've already created the group I'm just going to pull this down and I'm going to whoops put this new group into the one that I just created called CIA ops to keep it all together so go OK there and that will then create the Excel one then go into advanced settings again and once again I'm going to upload a file, so we're going to upload our Excel template into there, save that, allow that to complete, and we go in and do the last one, which will be a PowerPoint template. Okay, so we go into type it in, uh, give it a name, call it my PowerPoint template. Once again, just to keep things simple, it's going to be based on a document content type, it's going to be a document, and again, we're going to add it to the group that we've already created. So again we go OK. So now we have our uh, three new content type items. So again if I go back to content types here and then pull this option down to show the groups now you'll see that by putting it in their own unique group I can now group them together much easier. So I've got my Excel template, my PowerPoint template and a Word template. So they're good to go. I can now apply those to any library throughout my SharePoint site, but what I want to do is put them into this library here I've called uh, version library. Now what I'll have to do is I need to go to library and then I need to go to library settings and what I need to do is I need to enable the ability to add content types or manage content types for this library which is normally set to no, so I need to enable that. You'll notice that the temp default template URL here basically grays out which means that will no longer be valid so we go OK to update that now when we do that you'll see if I scroll down a bit we've now got a new section here called content types and what we've got is the default standard document type that comes with SharePoint and is used for every document library but what we want to do now is add from the existing site uh, content types so they're the ones that we've just added so again an easy way to find all these because we've grouped them You'll see here, so I just add, add, and make sure that I add all three across here. So I'm now adding my custom uh, content types to this library. Okay, so that will now update. If we scroll down again, we should see that we have our custom templates and the existing uh, one for the library, the document library. Now, obviously what you could do is you could go in and delete this one if you wanted, the one that's the default, but I would not generally recommend that you do that. A better option is to leave it as is but to hide it. So go into the change new button order here uh, and then what I'm going to do is basically uncheck that and then what's going to happen is is that will mean that that will no longer be visible and no longer the default the My Excel template at this stage will be the default because that is the next um, number. We can obviously change that order also if we want. So if we now go OK that will now complete that process. If we go back to our version library and we go new you'll see that I now only have my Excel template my PowerPoint and my word template in here so for example if I select my word template it's going to uh, prompt me to download the template open it in Word when it does open what you'll see is is no longer a blank document this is basically the um, Word template that I chose, the custom template that I created previously and uploaded. So there it is. Now again what we can do is we can go into files 
and you'll see if I go into new document I've again got my Excel template my PowerPoint and my Word template so again if I selected Excel for example this time again it prompts me in the same way I click yes it will then download that Excel template open it up and create a new document based on that template which I can then save back into my SharePoint site so when this comes up you'll see this again is uh, basically based on a template I've pre-created. Now the other thing you may want to get rid of is this new folder option so the way that we do that is to go into library library settings and then go basically back into the advanced options once again so if I go into advanced settings again you'll see that there's an option if we scroll down a little here that is called make new folder command available so I select that to no and then go down and save my options here and when I go back to the document library now you'll see that I select the new button and I don't have the new the folder option so again this has been an example of how to use the content type filter within SharePoint to allow you to basically inject your own custom Office templates into a document library so that when users create new documents they can base those on templates of your selection. So again nice quick and easy to do uh, requires a little bit of setting up but uh, content types do have a lot of advantages so again one of the advantages would be so if we go back into site settings and we have a look at our content types so for example if I wanted to perhaps update this um, maybe this word template here okay so again uh, you'll notice if I go into the advanced settings here okay so again if I wanted to change this to be uh, a different version or a different style or maybe even a different sort of file okay I can easily do that and when I do that what's going to happen is is that it's going to then update um, all the um, dependent templates so for example if we go back in here and locate the PowerPoint one again go into advanced settings right and again what you'll see here is I can upload a file here so I'm going to browse I could put in a new file here so I go strategy and you'll see that the option here to update sites and lists so this will allow me if I select yes which it is by default to update all the content types inheriting from this type so if I go OK save that so now I actually have a PowerPoint file uh, in that content type if I go back to my uh, version library here and I go new you'll see that again before it was a Word document uh, now you'll see that it's actually a PowerPoint so that content type because it's used in multiple locations within SharePoint you update in one location and then you've got the option to update every other location in which it is used so it makes it nice and easy to start managing and controlling your documents so again hopefully this video has given you a bit of an insight into how to use content types and also to create um, custom templates you can inject into a document library Thank you very much for watching.